Welcome to another Coding Like Mad MATLAB video. Today I'm going to do something a little different. I want to talk about the eval command. Um, this command is responsible for a hell of a lot of pain in my life and I think it's important that we have a little chat about why this thing is the devil. Um, so let's start out. Uh, what is the eval command? I know a third of my audience right now is wondering exactly what is it? Well, simply put, it is a command in MATLAB which lets you evaluate an expression as if it was MATLAB. So, in short, it's kind of god mode for MATLAB. You can use it to do anything. Um, now, that sounds great. Everybody likes powerful commands, but unfortunately, with great power comes great responsibility, and most people are not that responsible. So what you really want to ask yourself is this unbridled power, if a coworker or someone on the internet who wrote a piece of code hands you some MATLAB software, can you trust that they have used this particular power uh, gracefully? Can you trust that they aren't playing with um, what is kind of metaphorical dynamite without proper training. So let's look into exactly why this is a scary thing. To demonstrate this, uh, I have created a really simple little app here. So this app is um, has, has kind of two pieces of functionality that you might use the eval command for. I know there are other ways that people use the eval command, but I don't want to get into every single thing. I just want to explain why in particular uh, I think it's a scary thing. Um, so I'm not going to deal with things like how it's not maintainable. I'm not going to deal with how uh, the code is bug prone and really hard to debug. Uh, if you've ever seen eval code uh, or the eval function in badly written code, you know the nightmare I'm talking about. No, today we're just going to talk about why the eval function is insecure. So this is a really simple little app. Uh, what it does is I throw in uh, a definition for a function y, so like y equals x, and then I can put in some uh, options for plotting. This is like a totally reasonable way to do something. So for example, let's make a function y equals x squared and then I'm going to put in a title and some labels. So, super simple app, and I think people who have made sort of industrial apps recognize that this is a really useful thing to do, or people who have, for example, done their thesis in MATLAB boy, wouldn't it be nice to be able to retitle all of your figures or edit the legends after the fact? Or, you know, maybe I want to be able to add in uh, an instruction to change a font color. That sort of thing is really hard to do in more complicated pieces of software if it has to be done in dozens of places, but here it's automagic. Um, so this is like the allure of the eval command. So let's just quickly look at how I did this just so we know what we're getting into. So pretty simple little function. All it does is when you push the plot button, it takes a predefined value for x, and now it's going to try and execute this block here. So we've got a uh, first a single eval command for the top box, which just executes y equals and then whatever is inside that box. And then a second, uh, uh, it plots the figure, and then it will go line by line through the text box, executing anything you want inside that. So basically, the top box is kind of in a little bit of a walled garden, whereas the bottom box is just basically, you can do anything you want in there. So I think pretty much everybody knows this bottom box is a terrible idea. So. For example, nothing stops me from just going ahead and executing whatever MATLAB code I want in there. You can see I'm displaying the character A right now. So 
like I said, the eval command is basically god mode for MATLAB, and the problem is, is MATLAB runs on your computer, which means you now have shell access to this computer. So I wrote this code, and I'm not going to do something stupid to my computer, but I can't guarantee that I always have full control over the code I write. My code often runs on other machines, it runs in shared environments, and occasionally it'll run on a dedicated system for controlling hardware. So I really don't want this sort of thing just open to the world. So what could you do with it? Well, one of the things that you can do in MATLAB is a system command. So for example, if you look in the main command window, I just ran the dir command. So I'm running a Windows system and I'm able to view what's in my local directory right now. And you can see there's some MATLAB files. I've got a picture of Lake Louise in there and uh, some .m files from a tutorial I was working on. So, you know, that's great if uh, I'm going to edit something like this, but the, the problem is I can do anything, right? Like, for example, let's just go ahead and uh, uh, I've lost my window, bring it back. Okay, let's go ahead and let's delete that file. Can I do that? So I deleted it, I think, I hope. Well, I don't hope I like that photo, but anyway, let's see what happens. Yeah, who? it's gone. I just deleted a file and I kind of like that file. So, you know, I'm not gonna go crazy, it's my own system, but you can basically trash the system from this point. Um, and the scary thing here is, in principle, I can do anything. So while I am constrained by the controls Windows has put on what a user can do, how many of you right now in my audience are running this in administrator mode? I bet the answer is a pretty large portion. Uh, and even if you're not, there are the things called uh, privilege escalation exploits where you just need to be able to run a piece of code and it will get you administrator privileges, at which point you own the system. You can do anything you want to it. And you might say, well, this is running on a standalone system, but it's not that hard to open a browser and send it to a predetermined address with an instruction to download a file. So. Once you have uh, shell access and the system's on the internet, you can do basically whatever you want. So my point is, eval is a pretty scary little system. So, okay, I, I think everybody agrees that this text box where we just use the eval command was a pretty awful idea. Um, but I want to make a point actually about walled gardens as well. So this top box you might think is a lot safer. Um, some of you I think in the audience right now are probably saying that's BS and we're getting to it. So in other languages, for example in SQL, there's what's called a SQL code injection exploit. And the idea is basically that certain characters allow you to exit the prompt and do other commands to the database you're working in. Um, so for example, we can do the same thing here, right? It's going to try and execute as if it was code, whatever goes in this string. So we have a string y equals, and then whatever goes in this box, and then a semicolon. So y equals x semicolon is a legitimate string. So is for example, throwing in a semicolon here, and then we're going to put in a beep command. And you just heard it beep, right? The important thing is I need to terminate the last statement before I start a new one. So just to be clear, I can throw in again the system command and we can view my directory again. So I can do basically anything I want here at this point. So I, I think 
The point I want to make is, yes, eval is an incredibly powerful and incredibly useful command. In principle, if you are extremely careful with this command, you can probably make it safe. But did you? I don't think I've ever seen someone actually properly do the things they need to clean up the input to the eval command so that it wasn't a security hole. So that sort of thing might include making sure, for example, in this top box, that they're not directly calling a separate function, making sure that they're not actually injecting uh, semicolons to finish the command off, making sure that they don't have quotes in there in order to access other uh, uh, functionality. And the truth is, is for many things, there's better options. Um, so there are functions which rather than running any command will run a specific function with arguments you specify. So you can do substantially more safe things here. But even if you can't, if you're writing software that's ever going to run on someone else's machine, or because I hear this excuse a lot, if you're writing software which hypothetically could run on someone else's machine, please, please, please do not use the eval command. It is just not worth the security holes you're injecting onto any system it's ever going to run on. Um, so let's uh, finish off this video right there. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, there is a shutdown, I want to say now command? Is this a thing I can run? I, I think this is a good way to end the stream off. So um, I will see you guys next time, and hopefully I get this in the first try. It might be slash s. I think it has to be slash f. I think it.